Hello and welcome back to Pride of Anglia, YouTube's most intensive yet fast-paced FM series. Probably. Last time we of course left Braintree Town behind in second place in the Vanarama National League to take charge of Northampton Town, stuck in the League 2 relegation zone, turning down championship side Luton Town in the process. And so far it's actually gone quite well. We seem to have steered clear of relegation and are now in genuine playoff contention. Can the good run continue? I mean, I certainly hope so. As definitive proof of how good our start to life at Northampton has been, we win Manager of the Month for January. Fully deserved, it's gone a lot better than I expected. January signing Jed Garner also wins Player of the Month with an extremely impressive 6 goals from 6. It's almost as if I know what I'm doing. Well, I mean, let's not go that far. After last episode's marathon, this is more of a sprint to the finish. 16 league games left, hopefully with a successful end. The results from last time certainly have improved the morale, not that it could have gotten much lower, and our transfers seem to have given the squad a better balance and certainly attacking quality. We start off against Bristol City, who are only three points ahead of us, meaning a win could see us into the playoffs. The team is beginning to gel, although John Guffrey's fitness is odd. Centre back is the least intensive outfield position in the system and yet he's always tired and it shows early on as Ricky J Jones dashes through to give Bristol City the lead. We're absolutely awful all first half as Jones runs the show and only Van Sass keeps us in it. We somehow keep it to one though and in the second half we actually work a decent move and Garner grabs an equaliser which is safe to say we didn't really deserve. Van Sass the hero as we hold on for a point. Still, eight games unbeaten is a tidy run but it could come to an end against Cambridge a local derby of course and they are having a great season currently six points clear of a top it's not a very exciting game but the ratings tell the story a rock solid defensive display keeps Cambridge at bay Flores has the best effort of the match but it ends nil nil another decent result we're still only three points off the playoffs but we have dropped to place we then have a refreshing two-week break before we play Grimsby, although perhaps it's a little too refreshing for Aaron McGowan. But it would be nice to get a win here so we don't become adrift in mid-table or worse. Would also be nice if the team were more receptive to my team talks. We have a great early chance with Garner smacking the crossbar and then he does it again in the second half before we win a penalty which he steps up to score. A 1-0 win should have been more but much needed. The month ends with a game against Port Vale just two points behind us and it ends with them one point ahead of us as we lose. Pretty rubbish, certainly plenty of improvements needed in the summer. It's safe to say our playoff charge has faltered somewhat, but we have two winnable home games to start off the month. Even with regular rest, our fitness is always a concern, so I, a professional manager, check and yep, we don't have a fitness coach. That probably explains it. Right, well, let's solve this. We hire Mark Bradley, which should hopefully help, and I also recruit Sarah Carr as a significant improvement in the physio department. Will this help out against Oldham? It's another dull game, and one early goal from who else but Ghana is in enough for us to get the three points. We're looking a bit more stable now and for a rushed signing Ghana has nine goals in 11 games so not a bad bit of business. Newport County are next and it's the biggest scoring win of our spell so far as we hit four. 50% of them from Ghana, a great performance all round which keeps our playoff hopes alive. Dean Smith is then sacked by Norwich. I mean we've only just come here obviously but that is the big job we can get over the course of the save and while we obviously won't get it now, we have to go for it at every possible opportunity. Such as our upturn in success since joining, various dumb concerns raised by the players from last time are finally dropped which is nice. The games keep coming though and it's Tranmere next who are having a good season and it's a complete role reversal from a Newport game. A dreadful display, our heaviest defeat, not impressed at all. I hire former Brighton player Vicente as a scout to hopefully help us find some better players for next season. And hopefully we can do better against relegation threatened Aldershot. Ugh, I mean, it's better I suppose but not really good. Our good start has certainly fizzled out quite a bit and we unsurprisingly don't get an interview with Norwich but it at least sounds quite positive for the future so maybe one day. Our first Northampton youth intake is well let's move on and then we face Fleetwood who are challenging for promotion but who we beat earlier in the season with Braintree so I'm hoping we can win. We face them without Garner who is ineligible given he's on loan from them and Harriet who is on international duty and it shows because despite dominating we just can't find a way through and they end up scoring in the 83rd minute to win 
while Josh Feeney is also sent off for a perfectly good tackle and Nathan Thompson's ankle is broken for four months. I've had better days, but hey, apparently at least we're optimistic for the future. In a bid to rescue our now tiny remaining playoff hopes, I opt for a team meeting and the affable bunch all agree that yes, we probably should stop playing badly. Having seemingly secured safety from relegation, we seem to have downed tools a bit. Maybe I should remind them all that they'll all be replaced in the summer if they continue as they are. Carlisle are four points above us, so if we don't beat them, we can kiss the playoffs goodbye. Nothing happens for a long time until we work a neat move and Flores scores, only for it to be judged offside. It looks like it'll be more points dropped, but then we work another neat move with Harriet flicking into Ghana to give us the lead. Flores then bangs a free kick in to seal it. 2-0, we're still alive, but not by much. We need a collapse from about six other teams and to win every single game, which I don't think is going to happen. Gillingham are next, and it's a 0-0 draw as Ghana misses a penalty. Oh well, that was only one of the most winnable games we had. And 0-0 is also the scoreline against Exeter two weeks later, despite hitting the bar twice. We're still actually only somehow six points off the playoffs, so we could still maybe do it, but it's not looking likely. We do manage to come from behind to win against Mansfield though with goals from Garner and Guthrie so despite me writing off the season already it turns out other results have meant that we actually move up to 10th now only four points off the last playoff place and we have to play Plymouth next. But however things go, it's going far better than for our successor at Braintree. Alex Revel is sacked after a disastrous end of the campaign, which sees them lose every game in April and drop out of the playoffs. Sorry guys. If we can't beat Plymouth, then our playoff hopes are over for good. It's as simple as that. We work a move down the left as Rydhall finds Garner, who sends a great chance wide. Plymouth then strike quickly. Jimmy Talrani and gives them the lead, and then Kane Kessler Hayden dispatches a rebounded free kick for two. We keep hope just about alive as Sean McWilliams finishes from our own set piece, but it's not going well. And in the second half, nothing happens except Alex Patterson giving them a 3 1 lead. And so it's done. Five points off seventh with one game left. We so totally could have made it with a bit more quality, but ultimately that's what this side lacks. It would have been nice, obviously, but avoiding relegation is what we joined to do, and that's what we've done by a considerable margin. The final game of the season is a dead rubber against Rochdale. I mean, I say dead rubber, if we win, we might get in the top 10, but we're guaranteed top half whatever happens. And we end up with a pretty uneventful win, a Ghana penalty the only difference. Also, Rochdale had Yuri Zhirkov playing for them for some reason, he's been there for three years but anyway job done as far as we're concerned 11th place 66 points 19 points clear of the relegation zone which claims Sutton and Wimbledon Colchester and Cambridge our two local derbies in the division both get automatically promoted which is you know nice I mean I suppose we might end up at either of them one day the end of season review is very somber I know we didn't win anything but still safe to say our January signings did pretty well on the whole but it was certainly a bit of a patch-up job but a patch-up job which ensured our league status. Having a successful relegation battle is also probably a good thing to have on a CV with regards to jobs going forwards as well. Financially, it's not looking particularly good, which could present an issue as I need a major summer overhaul. This is our team of the year. Let's assess. Van Sass is on loan. He was extremely inconsistent, some outstanding games, some dreadful ones. Feeney was excellent and can surely only improve, so I will try to get him back. Rytal did okay, but can definitely be improved upon. McGowan and Guthrie's deals are up and neither wants to renew. Same for Flores. Pollock is okay. McWilliams wants to leave. Harriet did okay and Garner obviously excelled but is also only on loan. Connolly was absolutely awful and McCurdy and Hilton were both dreadful signings so the wings clearly need work. The rest of the squad bar maybe Paul Lewis I'm not interested in keeping. Guthrie wins player of the year. He was certainly good, but his fitness levels are constantly dreadful, so I'm not actually too sad we'll be losing him. Feeney gets young player of the year for half a season's work, while Garner wins top scorer for likewise. The board only want mid-table apparently next season, which clearly we can do. If we can do some decent deals, I reckon we have a shot at the automatics. Not that I tell the players that, of course. As I say, I'm happy with mid-table. Most of them will be gone anyway. The budgets are pretty terrible. We had loads of spare wage budget left already and they've just taken most of it. Fantastic. Definitely just freeze and loans then. Unless someone else wants us 
There's no jobs except our old one at the moment and I don't expect that to change. I'm not against moving but we have only just got here and I would only want to go to another team in League 2 or League 1 and it would be preferable to get something done with this lot in any case. Anyway, I'm in for a busy summer so thanks as ever for watching and I will see you next time.